Hi everyone. Uh, the topic we are going to discuss today is aerial trees. So there are few things that you need to know about aerial trees before going into any detail. First of all, when we talk about aerial trees, so uh, we should keep this thing in in our mind that aerial trees are basically the uh, example or you can say extension or specialized form of binary tree. So uh, as per the properties of bin binary tree, we know that for a binary tree there are uh, certain condition that should be fulfilled. So uh, the first condition is that for a binary tree, the maximum number of children can be two. Okay, zero is the minimum value, and at max, a binary tree can have two children. So A V L also satisfy that property of binary tree. Uh, other than that, there is a, a specialized, you can say, or an additional feature of avial tree, uh, avial tree that must be uh, kept in my mind, uh, kept in your mind, which is self balancing. Self balancing is second important feature of avial trees. Other than this, uh, as we uh, you can say talk about the avial trees as an extension or a specialized version of binary tree there is third property that we must not miss and that is for every child node its value is either greater than or equal to the parent okay and uh, for right child it this thing must be true for right child and we talk about the left child of a node of any node its value must be less than the parent node parent node so left child of any node should contain the value or must contain the value which is less than the parent node so if we uh, talk about an example uh, of any binary tree so let's create uh, an um, you can say a binary tree which is a valid binary tree and we will figure out whether it satisfies the property of avial tree or not. So when we talk about a tree, let's say I'll start with random values. I insert 12, let's say 15, 10, 9 and then you insert 10 again which is less than 12 but equal to 10. So it will go to the right side of the node. Now when, when we look at this tree, this is a very simple and you can say small tree uh, all the you can say values are at the right place and this is a valid binary tree because at every node right child is always less than uh, oh sorry right child is always greater than or equal to the parent node right child is always greater than or equal to the parent node and left child is always smaller than the uh, you can say root node or the parent node now when we talk about the avial tree what makes it different from you can say standard typical yeah or a trivial binary tree is this factor self balancing so what do we mean by self balancing we have talked about this property we have uh, observed this property of a binary tree here but what about the self balancing or uh, what is this thing which is basically called as self balancing so when we talk about self balancing you can take it as like uh, the uh, both sides of the trees must differ by at least one level that is this is at level number zero if we talk about uh, overall tree so you can see there are one two and three levels whereas on this side there is only one and two two levels or two layers or if we go from you can say a uh, leaf node towards the uh, root node we can say that for example node 10 has two ancestors okay and node uh, on right side so node 15 has only one ancestor so 2 minus 1 is 1 so it is balanced if the difference between left subtree and right subtree is 1 then uh, 0 or minus 1 then we will say that the given tree is balanced tree so uh, from here we can devise a formula that in order to uh, uh, check the balancing factor or check whether a uh, you can say tree is uh, balanced or not we will devise a formula which is uh, which we will represent as balance factor and balance factor is equal to height of left subtree 
minus height of right sub tree. Now another question is how we will determine the uh, height of a tree. So if we uh, start from this point, if we start from this point from here, so you can see that this is the you can say uh, leaf nodes 9, 10 and this 15 uh, are the leaf nodes. So we will start from here and we will determine whether what is the you can say height of each and every uh, node or each and every you can say child node of this tree. So the nodes at the leaf the nodes which are basically we call as the leaf nodes or they are which are the you can say last in our tree we will say that their height is zero. As we move towards the above level uh, with the high level you can see like this then so the height of this node is one we will add one in the height of its child whatever the maximum value of, of the height from these two nodes we will take it as a height of plus by adding one in that we will take it as a height of uh, you can say pennant node as you can see from here the height of right sub uh, node of right sub tree is zero and the height on left side is one so the max value between these two height is one we will add one in it and it will become the height of you can say the pennant node so one plus one is two so this thing in red color represents the you can say height okay now another thing is in order to check whether this tree is balanced or not we have to take the stiffness at each and every step of uh, or each and every uh, node having any child single one child or two child from this tree so let's do it with the green color since these are leaf nodes we don't need to you can say uh, find out their balance factor since they don't have any child uh, they, they don't have any difference basically a uh, height difference here so when we talk about this uh, so we leave we will exam this node this node and this node from calculating the balance factor okay now we go to the, those nodes which are intermediate nodes or those nodes that are having any number of child one two one or two this is the node starting from the left side which are which is having two children so the height of left sub tree is zero minus height of right sub tree is zero so overall answer is you can say zero i'll call it as this difference as a balance factor so uh, you can say acceptable values of a balance factor are zero one and minus one so if at any particular node this value exceed or uh, we get the value or this difference beyond this set so we will say that this is not an avl tree or this is not an example of avl tree uh, so at node 10 we have calculated the balance factor it follows in this set so okay this is balanced so far now we will go towards this node this is a leaf node we will exempt it uh, we will move towards its very uh, own parent so how will the uh, immediate parent now we will calculate the balance factor of this node so balance factor is equal to height of left sub tree which is one one minus height of right sub tree which is zero so which is equal to overall equal to one so it falls under this uh, you can say values given in this set so we will say it that this given binary tree is an avl tree So uh, from here we can uh, jot down few steps uh, that needs to be followed while we were determining whether a tree is an uh, avl tree or not or it is balanced or not. So these steps are number one first of all we have to determine what thing number one height height of any node that is what is the uh, height of a uh, intermediate node that we are or uh, every node that we are going to be uh, you can say that are part of an avl tree that we want to check whether uh, that will basically help out in determining whether your given tree is a balanced tree or not avl or not number two step is after determining the height of any uh, you can say uh, node of a particular given tree 
we will look for the balance factor that is what is the value of balance factor at each and every intermediate node after determining the balance factor we will look for the problematic node that is what is the node which is having balance factor that does not uh, comes under this range or the values greater than 0 1 and minus 1 then we will for, at fourth step we will go for the solution that how we can balance the such a given tree uh, to give you an example to give you an example of a tree that is not you can say a balanced tree i'll give you a few you can say nodes and we will determine whether they are uh, whether the given tree is balanced or not so uh, let's say i have got few values 7 um, 3 maybe 1 and uh, let's say 11 20 15 so is it a binary tree yes it is a binary tree because uh, the right nodes are always greater than the parent node and left nodes are always less than the uh, given or you can say parent node now another question arises whether this is balanced or not now in order to check the balance factor we will have to uh, you can say uh, determine or apply the formula okay the formula uh, which i have told you earlier is balance factor is equal to height of left subtree minus height of right subtree again i list the steps for you so the steps are in step number one what we do we will calculate the height of each and every you can say uh, node of this given tree at second step we will calculate the balance factor at third step if the balance factor is violated that is its value doesn't fall under the this set or 0 1 or minus 1 its value is greater than or less than this this the values given in this set we will look for you can say the problematic note what is the you can say problematic note here which is the in other words what which is the note that is uh, you can say causing the problem in order to uh, you can say balance this particular tree and then we will look for the solution we haven't discussed or uh, talked about the solution or this step so far we will try to cover these first three steps and determine whether the given uh, uh, node is uh, balanced or not one thing is clear the given tree is a binary tree now we are going to determine whether it is balanced or not so uh, we go through first step first step uh, is finding the height of each and every node intermediate or uh, leaf nodes of this given tree so the height of 15 is 0 because it is a leaf tree the height of 20 is 1 1 plus 1 height of 11 is 2 similarly when we move from this side height of 1 is 0 height of 3 is 1 and the max value between uh, left subtree and the right subtree is 2 so 2 plus 1 is 3 so height of 7 is 3 from height we cannot determine whether the given tree is balanced or not for that we have to figure out the balance factor uh, i'll represent it as b dot f okay so starting from this very intermediate node we will calculate its balance factor which is equal to height of left subtree now you can see that there is no left subtree so when there is no left subtree it means we will take it as a minus one height of left subtree is equal to minus one so minus one minus height of right subtree which is zero so the overall result is minus one which falls under this range or this set so we say that uh, this is okay this is acceptable we will move towards this planet which is 11 so here too there is no left, uh, left subtree that is here also we will take the height of left subtree as minus one so minus one minus height of left, uh, right subtree which is one so minus one minus one is minus two 
now we are, we came to the point where we received a, a one value of balance factor which does not falls under the values given in this particular cell so we will say it as this is our first traumatic node the node where we get a balance factor that does not falls under this given set so this tree is a you can say binary tree yes avl tree no this is this tree is not balancing itself or this is basically not balance a balanced tree so we have covered three steps so far height balance factor and traumatic node now we will go towards the solution that how can we convert such a tree which is not a balanced tree into a balanced or avl trees so we will look for the solution of uh, this type of you can say problem so when we talk about the solution of this type of the problem uh, we have to like uh, consider few cases uh, few cases that will uh, help us in determine which type of the problem uh, that may arise so after determining whether a given tree is an avl tree or not we will look for uh, the you can say we will look for the uh, solution that is how binary tree how avl trees are basically created and how they balance themselves uh, how they they have this capability of self balancing so when we talk about this thing uh, first of all we should know that in binary tree what we do is as soon as we get the values of the node we directly insert in the, into the table that is if i get 11 i'll directly insert here if i get let's say 10 i'll go and directly insert here i i don't look even for some other or think about some other way of inserting the node but in case of avl trees we have to like at after each and every insertion we have to look carefully or observe carefully that whether this tree is an avl or not because after every insertion factor the balance factor may have value which does not satisfy the values or which does not came under the values given here we need to correct it we need to like modify the tree in a way that it remains a balanced tree so uh, before going into further detail we know we can insert trees at leaf node uh, like for instance i have got like one node over here i have got another node over here i got another node over here so balance factor of this node is minus 1 minus 1 which is 2 this is if if i uh, do it again meaning the height of these trees so a height of you can say this node is 0 for this node height is 1 and for this node height is 1 plus 1 2 so when we talk about the balance factor so you can see that the difference between the height of left sub tree and right sub tree is minus 1 minus 1 which is minus 2 so this is one case where we uh, where we observe that there is a you can say difference in the uh, uh, or the difference of the height of both sub trees result, uh, results in the value that does not falls in the category of you can say uh, balance factor now we will consider this is one case okay i'll uh, take it as a case number 1 this is case number 1 now we will talk about case number 2 let's say we have different nodes and we are inserting different values in this order that we are inserting on the left and left of the original uh, parent node so when we talk about this type of situation or scenario you can see again that when we calculate the height 0 1 and 2 and when we calculate the balance factor of this node which is again minus 1 height of left subtree 1 minus height of right subtree minus 1 which is 1 plus 1 which is equal to 2 so this is here again my problematic node theek hai ji so this is also my problematic node uh, i'll call, call this case as a second case now regarding third case let's say we are uh, inserting node to first of all to the right of the parent and then to the left of the parent so when we determine the uh, you can say balance factor of this type of situation is so height is 0 1 and 2 and the balance factor of this node is equal to height of left subtree minus 1 minus 1 which is minus 2 so 
so you can see from here that in this type of situation or scenario this is also not a uh, you can say avl tree and there is fourth case that may arise as a result of insertion that is if i insert at the left of the parent and then to the right now if i uh, figure out the height so 0 1 and 2 and again the balance factor is 1 minus minus 1 which is minus 2 so this is also our first problematic node and uh, this basically uh, i call it as a case number 4 now when we look at all these cases we can see that there are uh, four different type of cases uh, we have encountered that may you can say uh, 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 result as a uh, as we insert new node into the you can uh, your uh, existing avl tree okay just so now when we have encountered any problem we will look for the cases that may arise uh, as a result or that best justifies this situation that have uh, you can say uh, came across because of uh, the insertion of different node so uh, we will name each and every case now so if i look at the case number one these are the four possible cases that may arise because of insertion so if i look at the case number one you can see that in this case what we are doing is we are inserting the node at the right of parent and next node at the very right of the parent that is we are moving right and right or we are doing insertion right and right so this type in uh, this type of case is uh, the case which is you can say we uh, name it as rr problem rr problem that is this problem has arise because we have inserted a node to the right of the parent and then again to the right of the parent so this type of problem we have encountered because of this thing so we name this case as rr problem now coming towards left side we can see that we have inserted to the left of the parent like we have inserted a node on the left and then another node on the left so what we will call this case as ll problem that we have encountered ll problem as a result of inserting a new node into the existing avl regarding case number three you can observe that we have moved towards the right and then inserted new node at the left of the parent right and then left this case is known as RL problem. Similarly, in case 4, we have moved towards the left, then towards the right. So, we call this case as LR problem. So, so far we have identified whether our given tree is avial or not, and then we have identified the cases uh, that may arise after inserting a a uh, new node and we name them as per the way we insert the node rr ll rl and lr problem okay so this is the first two cases we have encountered where the first two digits are same like right and then right left and l so we call these cases these cases as you can say the cases that need single rotation in order to solve the given problem single rotation and these two cases where the alphabets are different rl and lr we will consider it as under the umbrella of double rotation cases okay so uh, whenever we encounter rr problem what we do is that we will simply uh, do single left rotation single left rotation by performing single left rotation we will solve the given uh, uh, anomaly that arise because of inserting a new node and we will bring the tree into the you can say proper balance structure or balanced form similarly for case 2 we will do single right rotation what are these rotation we will discuss in a minute or so later in this lecture when we come about uh, talk about this case where we encounter rl problem this is the uh, falls under the category of double so we have to in order to solve this type of problem we have to do rl rotation and to solve this problem we have to do lr rotation 
okay what are these rotation what are these you can say these solution or uh, significance of this solution and how can we do this thing we will look by uh, with the help of you can say various example but, uh, but you should like be very very clear that these are the court cases that uh, arises that have you can say we have encountered because of uh, insertion at various position and uh, now we will look into each and every you can say case with the examples so considering case number one so case number one is are our problem that how can we whether uh, how can we identify whether the problem that has encountered is our problem and what are the possible solutions of this type of you can say problem okay let's say we have a tree let's assume a tree uh, 14 uh, let's say 17 and now we again insert to the right of the parent another value let's say 19 okay so the steps were that we have discussed previously were number one figure out height number two identify balance factor number three look for the problematic node and number four is you can say solve it yeah apply the proper rotation okay solution yeah rotation okay so we will start with the first step that is figure out the you can say height of the tree so the height of uh, this node is zero height of this is zero plus one one and height of this is one plus one two done with the first step now we will go with the second step that is figure out the balance factor we don't need to calculate the balance factor of this because it doesn't have any child and leaf node since doesn't have any child the height of left subtree minus height of left, uh, right subtree is always zero zero minus zero is zero so we will go with the intermediate node figure out the balance factor of 17 which is height of left subtree since the left subtree does not exist so we will replace it height with the value minus one minus height of right subtree which is zero so the balance factor is minus one okay uh, till this point our tree is balanced now we will go for the uh, determining the balance factor of this 14 height of left subtree does not exist minus one minus height of left subtree which is one which is equal to minus two so now we have encountered a node whose balance factor is not justified that is it does not fall under the range of minus one zero and one it is minus two so after identifying the first problematic node next step is we have to uh, solve it or apply the proper rotation now this is very very important step or very very critical or crucial step after determining the problematic node we will figure out the first two mo moves towards the newly inserted node that is if i write it down from first problematic node we have to move and recall two moves first two moves towards newly inserted node okay so when we look at here this is our first problematic node and we have inserted 19 that disturbs this balance balance factor of this tree so the first two moves are these two moves and we will record it so you can see this is right and this is also right uh, node of the parent so we have moved uh, right and then right so that means this is r r problem and the r r the solution of r r problem as we have discussed in our you can see you can see here as we have discussed in the previous uh, few minutes the solution is single left rotation okay so the solution is single left rotation that is we need to move the first problematic node towards the left side that is if i draw it again my tree is some somewhat like this 14 17 and 19 okay so this was my first problematic node fpn first problematic node i have to drag it towards the left side like this I have to take it down towards the left side okay so when I drag it to the left side as you can see here if I pull it like this 
so the my uh, you can say this node will go up and 14 will come down that is after applying single left rotation or after rotating this node left side only a uh, single time so my tree will become 17 14 and 19 this is now a balanced aerial tree and you can check it by calculating the balance factor of this uh, tree as well so this is our case number one and you have seen that how we can solve uh, rr type of problem now we will go towards the case number two case number two is ll problem okay so in ll problem let's take an example uh, for instance i have nodes like 24 i insert a new node 13 and let's say 2 so when we uh, we will follow the exact same steps that we have observed over here height balance factor traumatic node and rotation so first step is to figure out the height of this tree so the height is you can say 0 1 and 2 second step is identify the uh, balance factor so the balance factor of 13 is height of left subtree 0 minus height of right subtree which does not exist so its height is minus 1 0 minus 1 is minus minus 1 is plus 1 okay we are good to go now we will figure out the balance factor of 24 which is height of left subtree minus height of right subtree which is minus 1 so 1 plus 1 is 2 so this means that this node is our first traumatic node now we need to work on this node okay after determining the first problematic node or the node that is causing the problem we have to identify or figure out the first two moves from first problematic node towards the newly inserted node so here we can see first time we move towards the left and when we have to insert two two is also the left you can say uh, child of 13 node so the problem that arise is ll problem and its solution is single right rotation as we have seen in the uh, few few minutes back we have determined whether what is the solution of this type of problem this means that we have to basically drag the first problematic nodes towards right side only one time or single time so after dragging 24 to the right the form of tree will become 13 24 and 2 now you can see this uh, is a balanced avial tree this tree is balanced tree this concludes second case as well now we will look for you can say case number three so these two cases are were pretty simple the next cases were like uh, we have to do the rotation twice so let's look at this these remaining two cases that we have discussed over here uh, case one case two case three and case four okay so let's talk about case number three which is rl problem so let's take an example let's say i have got uh, values 14 27 and let's say um take any value 16 now we have to determine the uh you can say a uh, height of each of these nodes which is 0 1 and 2 next step is to figure out the balance factor so the balance factor is 0 height of left subtree height of right subtree right subtree since right subtree does not exist so it, its height is minus 1 so 0 minus minus 1 is 1 so uh, the height of this tree is 1 now when we look at the this node so we will figure out the balance factor of 14 which is height of left subtree minus 1 minus height of the uh, right subtree which is 1 which is overall equal to minus 2 so this is our first problematic node now we will list the uh, first two moves by starting from first problematic nodes towards the newly inserted node so we move like right and then left so the problem is rl problem and its solution is rl rotation So for this uh, I'll like uh, give you a you can say simple way which is like write it like this RL RL problem and its solution is RL 
so map it some uh, map it like this that is uh, l to r and r to l that is outer two values are mapped onto each other and the inner two values are mapped onto each other so now the thing uh, crucial thing is we have to write the values or we have to figure out which from where we do need to like do right rotation or at which node we need to do the left rotation so uh, first chromatic node is 14 so without giving it a second thought i write 14 here and the very next node on the path from new first chromatic nodes towards newly inserted node is 27 so it means that these are the two nodes that need rl rotation now how they need rl rotation 27 will rotate as left left side towards left side and 14 will rotate towards oh sorry 27 will rotate towards right side and 14 will rotate towards left side so at this point you can see we will uh, we have like mapped and figure identified which type of you can say rotation is required so now now uh, when we have determined the type we will do the rotation first of all we will solve this part okay so uh, so far we have like uh, determined the problem and its solution and uh, we have we came to the conclusion that first of all we will solve this part and then we will go for outer section so when we talk about the inner section it is like uh, 27 will rotate towards the right so if we look at the tree we have got 27 over here and 14 over there so when we talk about 27 we will ignore the tree that is above this line or above 27 whatever is the parent or you can say the parent of 27 we will ignore it we will consider only the 27 node and its subtree right and left subtree so in this case it would be something like 27 and 16 okay now 27 needs to rotate towards right side so it will become 16 will go up and 27 will come down like this we will fix this part this part that we have converted here as we, you can see okay, this is the part that we just uh, you can say resolve now i'll replace this part with this one my tree will become 14 16 and 27 this is my tree after inserting this or you can say replacing this with this tree that we uh, have performed after doing the right rotation now we will perform this one in order to perform this one you can see that 14 needs left rotation which means i need to drag 14 towards this side so after performing left rotation my tree will become 16 14 and 27 now this is a balanced avl tree and you can figure out this balance factor as well since this is binary tree it satisfies the property of binary tree as well uh, right child is greater than equal to or equal to parent and left child is less than parent so this concludes case number four no, three sorry case number three now we will look for case number four so the case number four is single sorry sing, we have covered both single cases we have looked for the rl problem now we will look for the lr problem and its solution again to uh, look for the lr problem we will start by creating you can say a tree so let's take an example of a tree uh, let's say 28 and um, 25 or let's better make it like 38 38 25 and let's say 31 greater than this node now first step is to identify the height 0 1 and 2 second step is to figure out the balance factor so the balance factor of 25 is height of left subtree since left subtree does not exist so the height you can say of left subtree is uh, here height of left subtree is minus 1 minus height of right subtree 0 which is equal to minus 5 so far so good 
Now we will figure out the balance factor of 38. So height of vector 3 is 1. Since right of 3 does not exist, so we will take it its height as minus 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2. Now this is our first chromatic node. We need to like uh, now figure out that how to resolve this type of problem which arise as a result of uh, you can say insertion into the binary tree. So we will talk about this. We will record first two moves from first chromatic node towards the newly inserted node. So we move towards uh, right, left and then towards right. So this is LR problem and its solution is LR solution. Again, we will do it like this, LR and LR. So, right will map to or need left rotation and left will need right rotation. Again, we will write first chromatic node here which is 38 and then immediate very next node which is 25. And we will map it on, you can say LR. 25 needs left rotation and 38 will be needing right rotation. Again, we will solve this part first. So, we will take 25 and its subtree and draw it here 25 and 31. Okay, so as per this solution, 25 needs left rotation. Okay, so if 25 needs left rotation, I'll, I'll, I'll write, it, write it as left rotation. So, it means that I have to drag 25 towards this side. So, the, my whole tree will become 31 and 25. I'll insert this part into the original part from where 25 and 31 was taken. So the, my tree would become something like 38, 31 and 25. Now we will perform this rotation. 38 will move towards the right side which means 38 must go in this direction. So after applying right rotation, our tree will become 31, 38 and 25. Now this is your balanced AVL and you uh, don't need to perform any further rotation on it. Here uh, you can say in all these cases we have observed that after insert, inserting every single node we do need to perform the rotations. Uh, which type of rotation is depend upon the case and it depends on the way the nodes have been or are inserted. This concludes today's you can say avial insertion and rotation. Thank you for watching.